Hi, this is the third video in my series designed to help your team successfully achieve their sprint plan. Now, if you missed out on the previous two videos, don't worry, I'll put links to them in the description below. So in my first video, I mentioned that one of the reasons teams don't complete their sprint plan is due to inadequate product backlog refinement. So in this video, let's focus on that. Typically what happens is teams bring product backlog items into their sprint with one or a combination of the following three issues. Firstly, those product backlog items are too big. Secondly, they are not well understood. And thirdly, they may have an insufficient level of detail. So let's unpack each one and what we can do about it. It's very common to see teams bring product backlog items into the sprint, which are too large. When product backlog items are too large, the team is not able to finish them inside a single sprint. And of course, that's the cause of why they don't complete their sprint plan. So what can we do about it? Well, here are a few tips. The first thing we need to do is to estimate the size of our product backlog items. Once we can identify the size of the product backlog items, we can see which ones are too big and need to get split down. Now, I suggest using an approach called relative estimation. You might be more familiar with the term story points or velocity. And if you're unsure how that all works, I do have a series on relative estimation on YouTube, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. So once your team has identified the product backlog items that are too large, it's time to split them down into smaller product backlog items. Now, this is something that your product owner will do with the team, but if you're the scrum master, then you might need to coach your product owner and the team on how to do this. Now, there's many ways that you can split requirements down. And if you'd like to learn more about requirement splitting, I do have a course on it that you might find helpful. So again, I'll put all these resources in the description below for you to check out. So once your team breaks down the product backlog items, how small should they actually be? Well, personally, uh, when I'm helping teams do this and my teams are running two week sprint cycles, what I like to see is the team break the product backlog items down so that they don't take any longer than two or three days to implement and test. So that's generally what I look out for, but every team is different and I would suggest you experiment and find what works for you. Now in JIRA, there is a handy feature that makes it easier to split larger product backlog items. Basically, you go to the product backlog view, you right click on the issue that you want to split, and you'll notice that there is a split issue option. You can click on that and you can break it down into those smaller product backlog items. Okay, let's move on to the next issue, and that is product backlog items that are not well understood. So sometimes teams don't understand what needs to be done. And this leads to problems completing the sprint plan because there is confusion, there are questions, and this causes delays. Um, it's also very hard to estimate how long the work is going to take to do and what they can actually fit into their upcoming sprint. So how do we deal with this? We need to make sure that product backlog refinement sessions are being conducted within the sprint. And this is just basically another meeting. You might hear the term product backlog grooming or story elaboration or story writing workshops. Um, they're all different names for the same thing. Personally, I like to call it product backlog refinement. And what do we do at these sessions? Well, basically the product owner should be taking the team through the upcoming high priority product backlog items, those that the team might be working on in the next sprint or the sprint after that. So in JIRA, of course, the product owner and the team will be looking at the product backlog view and the product owner will start from the top. They'll click on those product backlog items 
and take the team through the details. So here, the product owner might clarify what needs to be done, help the team better understand the needs of the customer and the requirements that need to be met. It's also an opportunity for the team to workshop possible solutions with the product owner, different options in how they can implement the requirement. So at these sessions, I like to see product owners drive them. I like them to take the lead. If you're the Scrum Master, you might be there facilitating the session and assisting the product owner on what should be done during the session and what to cover, but ideally you do want your product owner leading it. So what's really important at these sessions is the team is communicating as effectively as possible. And what's the most effective way for people to communicate? Well, it's through face-to-face -face discussion. As humans, we don't just communicate through words, we communicate through body language, tone of voice, and facial expressions. So ideally, we want to be having these product backlog refinement sessions again, face to face where we can see each other. Now, does that mean everyone needs to be back in the office? No, not necessarily. Uh, you can still have face to face discussions when working remotely with tools like Zoom or Microsoft Teams. So is a face to face discussion all that's needed to ensure the team is on the same page? No, there is one other thing. Our product backlog items need to have a sufficient level of detail. So let's talk about that. So like I said before, the team ideally has a discussion with the product owner on what's required and the solution that they are going to develop. Now, while a discussion is good to get the team on the same page, what it doesn't guarantee is that everyone remembers what was discussed. So how can we make sure that the team doesn't forget? Well, we're going to add the detail to the product backlog item. We're going to add the decisions that were made and the detail around the solution that we're going to provide. So this detail can come in a number of different forms. It might just be more acceptance criteria that we add to our user stories. It could be business rules that are captured in a Google document and then associated with the product backlog item. Or perhaps it's a wireframe of a user interface that has been created in a tool like Miro. So Jira makes capturing this detail easy. You'll either capture it in the description field or potentially as attachments. But bottom line is your product backlog items need to be sufficiently detailed so the team remembers what needs to be done, which means they will create a more realistic sprint plan and in turn, they are more likely to complete their sprint plan. Now in my next video, which I'll put up here, once it's been published, we'll look at how we can use the definition of ready to improve our product backlog refinement process. As usual, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Click that bell icon and I'll see you at the next video.